Right guys, we have details that we could see the bigger MacBook Air launch at the upcoming spring event, and so let's delve into it. So Mark Gurman a few months back did tell us we were going to see a bigger MacBook Air launch in the near future. Now this was very exciting news for me because I don't need the powerhouse performance of the 16 inch, but I do like the size of it, but I also want to pay a low price. And so a 15 inch MacBook Air made so much sense. I think this, especially replacing the M2 MacBook Pro makes so much sense. And so yes, I've wanted this for a while. Now leaks regarding this have been quiet for a while, but Ross Young now tells us that yes, we could see this launch in the spring of 2023. So that basically means we could see a March event release for this, possibly alongside the M2 Pro slash Max MacBook Pros, and also the Mac Mini refresh. Now interestingly, Ross Young says the display size could be 15.5 inches. That's actually a little bigger than I thought. The 16 inch right now is 16.2 inches. And so this is only slightly smaller than that, but it should be a big display increase over the 13.6 inch MacBook Air. Now apparently panel production for this MacBook begins in Q1 2023, hence why Ross thinks the release could be in the spring. Now as for the other specs, Ross Young says it's basically going to be a bigger version of the 13 inch, so expect the same design, the same MagSafe ports, the same notch, the same 1080p webcam, the same function row, basically it should be near identical apart from a few changes. Number one of course you get a bigger trackpad for the bigger size, also the speakers could be better on this, but also interestingly we could see option for the M2 Pro chip in this new 15 inch. Now that's interesting because I was expecting this to just have the M2 chip, similar to the current 13 inch, but I guess with the bigger body that could accommodate bigger performance, and so giving this the M2 Pro could make sense. I do still have my doubts though, because many did complain about thermal issues with the base M2 chip, and so imagine a fanless machine running the power of the M2 Pro chip, that could cause some issues, and so I would not be surprised if Ross is wrong about this, especially when he's not always right about the specs. And let's be honest guys, the price of this with an M2 Pro chip is probably going to exceed the 14 inch and at that point why would you buy this because it does not have ProMotion, it does not have mini LED, it does not have extra ports, so yeah this should stick to the base M2 chip. But yeah as I said I'm super hyped for this, I'm sure many of you guys are as well because this could really be the perfect Mac for many because you're now getting that bigger size, but you're paying less, you're not getting the additional performance that of course most don't need with a MacBook. And so yeah, this just offering that base M2 performance, now with a larger display, just sounds amazing. And while I am pretty happy with the M1 MacBook Air, I won't lie to you guys, I would be tempted at buying this 15 inch, depending on the price. Because yes, that's the key part to all of this, what's the price going to be because if it's way too expensive and it's close in price to the 14 inch there's no point getting this but if it's maybe around 13 or 14.99 i think that could make sense and also what i'm hoping with the release of the 15 inch is that apple can number one kill off the m2 macbook pro that's completely useless we don't need it replace that with the 15 inch but also of course bring down the price of the 13 inch maybe to $10.99 or maybe even $1,000. And yeah, hopefully that can then bring down the M1's price to $899 or $799. And I think that would be the perfect lineup for entry-level users. So yeah, guys, very excited for this new machine to launch. And hopefully Ross Young is right about this. Anyways, let's delve into your questions. So Slow Cuba says a 15-inch M2 or later MacBook Air would be the perfect laptop for me, maybe coupled with an M3 Ultra Mac Studio, but I think since I've already sunk the money into my M1 Mac Mini and M1 Max MacBook Pro, still making payments there, I'll struggle on with what I have, thanks for the vids. News about the 15 inch air is welcome and it will almost certainly be the laptop I'm most likely to buy in the future. And yes, a MacBook Air 15 inch coupled with of course a powerful desktop like the Mac Studio would be perfect. For me anyways, the base chips are more than fine for my use, I've yet to max out the M1 chip, and that's why I've wanted a MacBook Air 15 inch, because I do like the bigger size of the 16 inch, 
but I don't need the extra performance and all the other bells and whistles. I just want the screen size and the base M2 chip. And yeah, I'm very sure this will sell very well. So at Sightless, White says, I really hope this is true. I would love a 15 inch MacBook Air. It would be nice if the 15 inch was able to connect to two external displays instead of one external display like the 13 inch MacBook Air right now. And unfortunately, this is likely not to change with the 15 inch because it should still have the same internals. It's just gonna be a bigger version of the 13 inch. And so all the limitations that has, the 15 inch also gets. So Opus Digital Audio says, do you think the MacBook Air will get midnight and thinner? While well, your first point regarding midnight, I could see that coming to the MacBook Pros, but no, it's not gonna get thinner because the thickness of that MacBook Pro does serve a purpose. It needs the ports, it needs that bigger battery, it needs a space for cooling, so if you care about thinness, get the MacBook Air instead. So at Grey Deep says, processing power is enough on the M1. All I want is a bigger and faster ProMotion screen and I would upgrade in a blink. Now, unfortunately, I don't see Apple giving us ProMotion on this. That's going to remain a Pro exclusive. However, yes, a bigger screen with the base M2 chip sounds perfect. So regarding the leaked benchmarks of the M2 Max chip, at user says, how do we know these benchmarks are legit? Couldn't they just be total BS? And yeah, that is a real possibility since of course, we have two benchmarks now and they have drastically different scores. We just have to take a grain of salt with these benchmarks like we do with any other leak. However, in my opinion, I do have a feeling that one of these benchmarks are actually legit because I'm sure Apple's internally benchmarking these chips. And so for one of these tests to land on Geekbench's database does seem likely. So Mycott says, when M2 Max Pro, I'm assuming you're asking about the release date and that should be in the spring. So expect a March event where we see new Macs, including these new MacBook Pros, and of course, maybe the 15 inch MacBook Air. However, since these MacBooks are pretty minor refreshes, I could also see a press release. Apple does spice their schedule up now and then, so it's very likely that of course, like they did with the iPads in October, they give us press releases instead, and no actual vent. Anyways, tell me your thoughts regarding this report in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the link above on details regarding Apple's VR headsets. And on that note, see ya peeps.